Welcome to Small Business Saturday. Welcome to Small Business Saturday's video series with your host and my husband. And my dad, Aaron Montgomery. Join the conversation. Let's talk some business. Good morning. Welcome to Small Business Saturdays. My name is Aaron Montgomery, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there. Todd, good morning. Thanks for joining me this morning. Hopefully, uh, you've got big plans for the Labor Day weekend here and uh, are excited to get those plans happening. And uh, we'll, we'll do a little business here this morning, but then we'll get into, into some fun. So uh, looking forward to uh, having a conversation with you guys today about the essential tips for smart, already tongue twisting. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> the essential tips for starting an e-commerce website. So um, my wife and I, as you guys probably know, if you've been following along, have uh, started an e-commerce business together. It's her business, but I'm trying my best to to help her. You know, that's what I do. I'm a small business consultant, so uh, she's the perfect candidate because I get to uh, use her as the guinea pig. So she started a uh, e-commerce business called WeHeart.biz. If you want to go check that out while we're kind of hanging out here. In fact, she's got a Labor Day sale going this weekend and, and uh, all sorts of good stuff over there. So throughout this process, though, it's been great because we've been able to kind of figure out, you know, what works, what doesn't work, um, kind of what this e-commerce thing is all about. And I think, you know, a lot of folks use e-commerce for different reasons. Um, in fact, next week on on uh, Two Regular Guys podcast, uh, Todd is going to be joining us over there and we're going to talk about e-commerce again. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, Todd says, uh, help, I'm totally going to be distractible today, guys. So um, I'm coming off being a little bit sick. So uh, <laughs> help her stay out of her way. At the same time, it's a delicate balance balance for sure. <laughs> it's a super delicate balance because especially because of my nature, I'm uh, a little bit overbearing sometimes, especially with her. So she is fantastic at uh, dealing with me and, and uh, growing herself and, and uh, not letting me get in her way. So um, good stuff there. All right. So back to where I w was. Uh, so next week we're going to on two regular guys podcast, we're going to talk e-commerce again. So this is kind of a little bit of a preview of that. But next week, we're going to have Todd joining in on two regular guys. And we are going to be able to go into a little more nuts and bolts, a little deeper. Um, he's going to talk about Euclid and um, get some really good information about that. I'm probably going to be talking about Shopify mostly today because that's what we built WeHeart.biz in. I also have uh, experience with BigCommerce. But all of these techniques are kind of the same. So... That's what I want to talk about today. And really what I need from you guys, you guys that are tuning in this morning, is I need your questions. I need your feedback. I need you guys to really tell me what it is that you want to know about e-commerce. That way we can explore and get the right information out there for you. All right. So that's that's your uh, assignment. That's your mission here today. Uh, be real active in those comments and uh, and let me know what questions you have about e-commerce and, and we'll get into it. So I've got some stuffs here, some tips, some things that, you know, um, I, I grilled Kyleen about and said, Hey, what are the tips? What, 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 uh, what were the biggest surprises? What things did you learn as, uh, as we were going through this? And so, so that I want to share those things with you guys today. Uh, but I also really want your questions. So that's, that's your mission today. I'm looking forward to it. So if you're, you're checking in, let me know. I know Todd's here. Uh, who else is checking in here this morning? Just, uh, give us a, a quick hello there. And, and, uh, you know, we've got to do our weather report or whatever else that we've got. I'm kidding. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything from the list before we dive in. Um, all right. I think, I think that's it. Uh, let me put this up there. Oh, good morning. Uh, Chuck, thank you for, for joining me this morning. Good morning. And, uh, looking forward to hearing, uh, any questions, feedback that you have. I know you guys are, have all kind of been doing different things. And, and one of the things that I want to, um, talk about too, is there's a lot of different reasons to have an e-commerce site. So don't go set up an e-commerce site just because I said you should set up an e-commerce site or, or that we're talking about it today. You don't necessarily have to have an e-commerce site for your business for it to be successful. Now, the e-commerce site can do a lot for you because you know that's just the world that we live in today. You know How many of us do a good deal of our shopping 
um, online. You know, I, on on my drive here this morning, I heard a commercial for Walmart, and uh, you know they're promoting do all your shopping right online, free delivery, no membership fees, blah blah blah. You know, so that online shopping is something that people are doing, but it's not necessarily the, everything that they're doing. So your business might not even need it. So your business might be just fine with a really good landing page, collecting quotes, things like that. Um, and you don't necessarily need an e-commerce business, but if you have, you know, Todd talks a lot about, you know, setting up stores for your customers so they can make sales and, and take orders, you know, so there's a reason to set up an e-commerce business. Um, Maybe, you know, you're interacting with people all over the country and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I got some questions or some comments coming in here. And good morning, Michelle. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Marion says, I have a growing shop on Etsy, but also want to build my own e-commerce site. And, and that's, you know what, uh, Marion, that's, uh, that's a fantastic point. And uh, that was actually going to be my last point today to uh, discuss that whole thing but you gave me the perfect opportunity to dive in here right now. So let's start there. Um, we're gonna flip the script, I love it. So here, here's the here's my take on Etsy. So um, just so I'm, I'm honest and open with you guys, uh, you know, Kylene built her Shopify store. It's out there, weheart.biz. And uh, maybe I'll just pop that on the screen so you guys can uh, check that out there. Uh, maybe, there we go. Um, so weheart.biz. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going well, she's getting some people there. Uh, you know, she watches the analytics on it and, and, you know, okay, we had 18 people on the site today, you know, and, and now more, now more, now more, no more. It's great. And so now it's figuring out how to get them to buy and stuff like that. But part of the challenge when you're setting up an e-commerce store is getting people to that site, you know, so you can do ads and Facebook and all sorts of different things. And it's just a building process. Um, so one thing that you can do is is right there that an, an Etsy store. Uh, so Etsy is going to be a great opportunity because there's lots of people there and people are searching for personalized products and and gift items and <clears throat> excuse me and things like that. So Etsy's great. Here's the problem. I, I've known a lot of people that have uh, that I've worked with, you know, through Pick the Gift and some other things that that have that really awesome Etsy store and and you know tons of great reviews and they're selling all sorts of stuff and. Um, you know, I, I, in fact, I won't name names, but, uh, one young lady that I work with there at pick the gift, uh, we were talking earlier on this year and, and, you know, she was crushing it on Etsy. Just, uh, you know, I mean, we were cranking out stuff for her and, and business was booming and all of a sudden Etsy decided they were going to change their, their algorithm, their way that things went. And she did not have free shipping. And therefore, because she didn't have free shipping, um, all of a sudden sales just dried up. And she had to go back and change everything, redo all of her pricing. It, it was a mess. And that's the problem with, with building out your e-commerce platform on somebody else's deal where you don't own it. Um, you know, so Etsy is, is the front end. Etsy owns all that. It's like building your house on rented property. So it's great to have Etsy because it's going to drive people. You're going to start getting some customers and things like that through the e-commerce world. But the key is, is to make sure that you are connecting with those customers and ultimately getting them to your website to make their additional purchases and things like that. So, you know, the other problem with Etsy is that you've got to pay them a fee, whether you make sales or not. So, um, you know, those those types of things. So Etsy is a great tool, lots of traffic there, stuff like that. But figure out how to make that connection. And here's some tips to make that connection. So when you've made that sale on Etsy, when you're shipping out the product to them, try to get something in there. Try to get them, uh, you know, a, send them a thank you card afterwards. Just different things to entice them to come to your website and sign up on your website. You know, you don't want them to go back to Etsy. You want them to love what you gave them and then come back to your website to make further purchases. You know, maybe it's a, a lifetime discount code that that they get only shopping through your website kind of thing. So there's my Etsy uh, take. And, and I think that, uh, you know, it's great, to, a great place to start. And it's a tool that that I, I like. But yes, having your own e-commerce store, like Marion said, uh, and I'll pop that comment up if I missed that already, having a growing shop on Etsy, but also want to build my own e-commerce site. So yes, you definitely want to do that. It's not if you've got that Etsy stuff and you've got all that information there and that those products built, 
you have your e-commerce site built. You just need to take that information and get it into a you could Shopify, whatever platform that you're going to choose that that feels the best to you. So um, good stuff there. And uh, Joseph, um, super early for you, sir. Uh, for an online e-commerce site, I recommend finding a place to host it. Choose an os- open source e-commerce platform then learn how to use it. This is a very low cost way to have your own site, full control of it. I'll have a rewatch time <laughs> time for bed. Yes, I know it's, uh, I figured it was either early or, or really late for you there over in California. So uh, thanks for tuning in, Joseph and Joe, sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so that, that, uh, so that would be like a, you know, get a word, Press and do Woo- WooCommerce would be one that comes to mind and, and things like that. So yeah, there's lots of different ways. Um, you know, nice part about things like Shopify and BigCommerce is that while you're kind of using their platform, um, you can get all of your data back out of it and it's easy to move to other places. So um, I'm actually moving a site from BigCommerce to Shopify right now. Um, no other reason than a, a system that this particular company is using uh, integrates with Shopify and doesn't integrate with BigCommerce. So, um, you know, it's not that I like one over the other. You know, I've, I've like I said, I've used both. Um, but you've got WooCommerce in the in the um, WordPress world, and then all sorts of other e-commerce uh, opportunities out there that uh, that you can get on your own platform and and through hosting. So, um, yeah, there we go. So, uh, all right. So let's dive in. Let me, let me get back to the top of my list here. And like I said, as you guys have comments, questions, uh, you know, just tell me what you want to know. That's 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 what I want from you guys. That's your mission. Let me know what you need to know, and we'll either try to answer it today or get back to it, or I'll just make Todd answer it next uh, Friday at Two Regular Guys. How about that, Todd? <laughs> All right. Um, oh, r- real quick, one more shout out to, to Todd before I, I uh, dive in. Yeah, I've already wasted 12 minutes. No, we got good stuff in there. So um, great video last night. Uh, there was some discussion on his uh, wholesale group that he uh, somebody was asking about putting vinyl on a yoga mat material, kind of a studio yoga mat material. And I happen to have some uh, at, at pick the gift that uh, they UV flatbed print onto. But uh, so I just shipped a piece to Todd and, and uh, like the rock star that he is, he just tried it live on video. It was awesome. <laughs> so I love that, 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 uh, that was really exciting. So um <laughs> Oh, here we go. Todd says, uh, Joe, Joe's going to work 27 hours a day with that month vacation coming up. So um, Todd says, I'll, I'll wing it. <laughs> yeah. W- Terry tried to send you an outline shell today, but or, or yesterday, but I gave him your wrong email address. So I'll get that over to you after this, Todd. So we can kind of wing it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's talk about some things to do with an e-commerce. Um <clears throat> So, like I said, I I, I kind of grilled Kylie and my wife and said, okay, so what, what what are the biggest tips? What are the biggest things that you learned as we set up this e-commerce store together? And um and and I made her give me three things, and uh, she she did fantastic. Um, even though I I was like, uh, explain more, explain more, explain more. Okay, so the number one thing that she said was have a plan, have a 3000 foot view of what you're trying to do. You know, think about what the look and feel is that you're going for, because that'll help you decide what theme, what, what uh, service you're going to use, you know, what features are important to you, you know, get all of those things planned out. So this is just like starting a business. You're starting an e-commerce site. You need to have a bit of a plan for it. Not, not something that you can just dive right into and, and, it, well, that's not true. You could just dive right into it and just start playing. Um, the problem with that is that you're going to spend a lot of extra time that you don't need to spend. Y- you need to be able to get, like I said, get that 3000 foot view of what you're trying to do and, and get that down on paper and get that clear and 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 share that with the people that are going to help you. Um, you know, that's what Kylene and I were able to do, really talk through that before we started, because then it helped us decide, okay, what do we need to make sure that we can do on the site, you know, what, what kind of, how do we need to show things? You know, what are the apps that we need to connect to it? The apps are really important um, and, and all that stuff. So that's number one, have that 3000 foot view uh, in place. The second thing is to start 
documenting the details and 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 really sweat the small stuff you know the, the old saying goes don't sweat the small stuff well that's actually the opposite in in setting up an e-commerce store because all of those little details are the things that are going to drive you nuts if you don't get those clearly put down into some sort of format you know what i would suggest is setting it up in some sort of a spreadsheet type format because a lot of times with e-commerce platforms you can actually have all of your data in a spreadsheet and then uh, export that out as a csv file which stands for comma separated values and take that csv file and actually import the data into the e-commerce platform and have 95% of all of the product setup done for you, you know, so, so get the details documented out. Now, maybe you've picked your platform, you know, maybe the better thing to do is to kind of pick that platform and then go get that sample format of their CSV upload piece, you know, so you're going to maybe this export or a lot of times they have a sample of, of how their data is laid out. So then you can just go in there and uh, pick and choose. In fact, I, I may pop, up yeah I, I don't think it'll take too long i was going to try to pop up uh the spreadsheet that uh, kylie and i use but the things you need to have on there is you need to get your pricing all set figure out what the price is going to be um you know and and my recommendation on price is always set it high if you every comment that we've gotten so far as far as feedback on on weheart.biz is that the prices are pretty high and and yes they are and we're we're understanding of that we're okay with that and I'm going to talk about why we did that here in, in just a little bit. But here's the thing. We set our prices high because we needed to figure out where we needed to be as we continue to grow and as we really kind of get our finger on things and, and get a better understanding of what, what the market will bear, we can bring those prices down. It allows us to do really awesome sales and, and things like that. So you know, e your e-commerce store, start, start high and then, you know, you can do sales and things like that. You can't it's not as easy to raise prices as it is to lower prices or to, to do sales and things like that. So start with your prices high. So that's one uh, price list. Uh, where did I, I just lost my place. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Price list, real good descriptions. Um, so making sure that your descriptions have very, so what you want to do is you want to take your product and you want to be able to describe it and you want to be able to have somebody close their eyes, read your description. So close your eyes and have somebody read your description to them. How about that? You can't close your eyes and read at the same time. So close your eyes and have somebody read that description of your product to them and for them to be able to clearly see it in their brain. So I'm closing my eyes right now on the video part of this here. Okay. Yeah. I can see what that that tote bag looks like. Yeah, that makes, oh wow, yeah, that sounds nice. So your description needs to be as detailed as possible. And um, we'll get to the SEO part here in a little bit. There's some other things you need to do in the description section there that, that are gonna help you. So descriptions are really good. What keywords uh, are people gonna be searching for to find your product? Uh, so think about that, get those all listed out with that. And then think about the categories, think about how and document the categories of how e each of these things are going to be laid out. So um, here we can, I can, I can actually pop this thing up quickly and do that. So there's, there's the back end, and, and we'll come back to that in a second, but um, <laughs> typing well. Okay. So there you go. So, so the categories are, you know, when, when I'm here, what, what are the different categories? So the personalized gift category here, this is, um, let's see if that's, nope, that's the wrong way. Let's try that. Oh, gar. I, mm, be live, we're gonna have to fix this. <laughs> all right, so the categories here, up here, this is just all of them, but then you got drinkware, you got fit, fitness products, bags, home decor, home office gifts. You know, what are those categories? So get get real clear about what those are um, and, and do that stuff. So so there there's the next piece there. Um, Get, so get all that documentation done, all right? So and then before I get to number three here, uh, let me see what comments we got coming here. Uh, Jason, hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us here this morning. Um, Todd says, I think everything is consistently involving. You have to stay on top of it and not just put it out there and wait. Absolutely, that's a, that's a great point, Todd. Yeah, um, just always keeping up to date. So you know, the way that uh, Kylie's website looks right now is way different than it was when we first launched it, and and pretty much weekly it gets you know, it gets some changes to it. Uh, you know, 
she spends a lot of time getting feedback from other people. Um, she's in a, in a group uh, on Facebook that that is an e-commerce group, and you know they they tell each other, and sometimes it's a little bit brutal, you know. And like I said, we've got lots of feedback that the price is really high, so we're we're looking at that, and you know, changing how the way things look and changing the pictures, and we're going to talk about that in just a second too here. So. Um, Let's see, what other comments am I missing here? Uh, Todd says, easier to lower prices than raise them. Absolutely. A premium product using premium equipment allows for premium price. Yeah, and 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 I think I kind of had that conversation a little bit yesterday. Um, you know, Todd had posted a picture of a Tumblr. I don't think I have one here with me, but a Tumblr that uh, I had sent to him and somebody asked where to get the blanks and I sent him a link to the blanks. And I'm like, oh my God, that's pricey. I'm like, well... Maybe, maybe it's pricey to you, but you know, some people Starbucks is pricey. Some people live at Starbucks. So what, what's price really mean? You know, everybody has a set point, a, a price set point. And, uh, you know, so it's why, you know, some people will, will buy a, uh, economy car and that's why some people have to, you know, spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on their car kind of thing. So, um, yeah, Barbara says here late, but glad you record these. Absolutely, uh, you know, seven a.m. Central Time is is early for a lot of people, Barbara. So, um, but we want to get the day started and, and going. So, uh, yep, tune in. Let, let let me know what questions. This, the great part about these Facebook Live deals is that you can comment on these things anytime. Go back two years ago to some of the stuff that we talked about and ask your questions there, or bring your feedback there, and let's just keep that conversation going. That's what I love about saying though. So, um, yeah, great. Thank you. All right. So the third tip that she gave us, <laughs> I'm all over the place as usual. Um, the third tip that she, she gave me that um, I think is a really good tip here is that apps are important. Um, most e-commerce sites have uh, different apps that, uh, that are just a big part of it. You know, that you've got your basic layout, your, your basic kind of setup, but um adding functionality, adding features to it is is all about the app. So I'm going to go back to uh, the back end here of, of the Shopify store here. And uh, so here's here's the apps. Um, some of these we're not using a whole lot of right yet, but uh, they're they're for later on down the road. Um, some of them we, we use quite uh, extensively, um, you know, so, so think about the, the 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 different apps that you can use here. Um, this is how people put in in their personalization, what, what how they want to personalize through this improved contact form. Um, we're using this Ultimate Scarcity Pro right now to have that countdown timer for her Labor Day sale. Um, Shop Sync here is is how we sync with the. Um, you would think that it would be a little more descriptive, but Shop Sync here is how we uh, link Mailchimp to to Shopify here. Um, order desk is how we manage and submit orders and things like that. Obviously you got QuickBooks, uh, HubSpot is a CRM. Guten is a print on demand, uh, kind of, kind of group, you know, so all sorts of different apps that, that you can use. So take, and, and again, this is why you want to decide up front kind of what the look and feel and what features that you you want your site to have because guess what there's probably an app for that <laughs> you know how they say on the phone well it's the same thing inside a lot of e-commerce you know big commerce is the same way um even woocommerce they've got apps and things like that so um again not super familiar with Euclid yet but i'm, I'm learning a lot about it from todd so i'm guessing there's probably apps within within that as well uh so so lots of good stuff there and, um, you know, so, so use the apps and, and here's the other tip about the apps that I, I want to share is that a lot of times you look at them and, and, you know, they've all got their little, little free thing, like, and, and we're, we're just about ready. So in fact, let me go back to this here, uh, put that back up. So this ultimate scarcity pro, you know, we're using the countdown timer, um, and, and we're using, uh, the cart timer. And we're using the, the social proof thing here. So I'm going to go into the settings of that here real quick. You know, how many people have viewed this and all that other stuff. Um, well, no, that wasn't the one that I wanted. Sorry. Sales pop up. That's what it was. Um, so, you know, for, for five bucks a month, we can upgrade to get some other features to kind of change what it is to do analytics and stuff like that. And then we get into the advanced settings here and 
you know, we can change, we can have, you know, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, kind of like themes and templates and some additional kind of stuff. And so don't be afraid to spend a little bit of money. The nice part about all of this stuff um, is you can, you know, spend the five bucks, use it for a month, see if you're getting that $5 worth of value out of it, and then cancel it. You go right back to the free version. So so don't be afraid to to spend a little bit money, a bit of money on the apps that you need to see you know, that return on investment, it's, it's like anything in your business, you know, should I invest in this heat press over that heat press? Should I invest in this over that? It's, it's like anything in your business. What's the return on investment? Don't, don't, don't worry about how much that initial cost is. Don't let the cost be the deciding factor because guess what? If I can spend five bucks and make a thousand bucks, would you do that? Okay, but if I can spend one dollar and only make ten dollars, which is the better investment, the five dollars or the one dollar? Well, you know, if you know what you're going to get, you don't know what you're going to get, but you have to make an educated guess, a, a smart business decision about that. So don't be afraid to spend a little money here and there, but just make sure that you have a way to manage and track those things. You know, the 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 problem that, that I've gotten myself into is that I love all these little toys, all these little, you know, let's try this, let's try that. But then I never would, would kind of get my plan for then going back and evaluating. Did that work? Was that $5 a month, a, a, a valuable piece? So, you know, a, as I improved my business plan and set up those budgets and reviews, then I was able to say, okay, yeah, that five bucks, I don't need to spend that. I can, I can cut that out and, and be right back, you know, where I started in it and, and be okay. You know, I, I learned something. I, I, you know, probably picked up some things along the way. So, you know, the $5 was worth it, but should I continue to do it? Probably not, you know, so make those decisions about those things. All right. All right, cool. So what questions you guys have? Those are the the three tips that she gave me. Um, like I said, I wanted to talk about a couple of other, other things here, but I want to know what questions you guys have. Um, so let's, let's uh, give, give you a second to grab that. All right. So the other thing I said I was going to talk about, and I'm just reminding myself here so I don't forget. And if there was something else that I was supposed to talk about that, uh, that I mentioned that <laughs> I'm skipping over, but I want to talk a little bit about SEO and what that is, is search engine optimization. And I also want to talk a little bit about images and pictures and photography and stuff like that. So um, let's start with the photography thing. And like I said, the other questions you guys have, let's 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 bring them bring them on here, and uh, let's hear from you. Um, photography, okay. So photography is hugely important. Um, the images, uh, I I've read reports. You know, they're they're all over the board here, but I've read reports that say ninety three percent of all purchasing decisions that are made online through through an e commerce platform, whether that's you know an Amazon type type of purchase or down to somebody like WeHeart.biz there is that they make their purchase decision based on the picture. Um, obviously buying stuff online, the thing that's missing is that ability to go touch and feel it and, and, and really kind of take it all in before you make that purchasing decision. So the only way you can get that similar feel is by having good pictures. So having uh, lots of things that, uh, that just make them feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to go back to, um, course I can't type with while I'm doing this. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go back to the front page of, of Kylie's site here and we'll pop that back up. All right. So let's talk about that. So as you can see here, um, we've got some different kinds of, of pictures. You know, these are, these are obviously mock-ups, um, you know, things like that. But then some of these are actually live pictures and, and the more live pictures you can get, the better off you're going to be, you know? So, um, and, and let me just open up a couple of these here. You know, as you can see, you've got some mock-ups and along with some live pictures. Um, you know, so the more images and pictures you can show, uh, the better off you're, you're going to be. And, um, you know, so we're just showing the kind of different design options here. But then you also need to have, have like I said, some, some nice live pictures so people can, can kind of get get that feel of what it's going to look like. Um, so, so stuff like that. Um, so here, here's a tip for doing that. There are, are different uh, groups on, on Facebook and, and they're basically up and coming photographers looking for, to add more stuff to their, 
kind of portfolio. And so you can all, you can do a, a product swap with them. And that's what we've done here. Uh, this, I don't know if this is actually her or not, but this name is her, her name is Kevin. And, um, Kylie connected with her through one of these Facebook groups of, of these photographers. And basically we sent her the mug in exchange for sending her the mug that she could keep. Um, she sent us a whole bunch of really great pictures. Um, and then there's an, another young lady named April and, and I'm going to get to, um, some of these, these towels here and, Oh, no, that's not the right one. I, I got to go to the towels <laughs> in fitness. Um, yeah, there we go. So again, we, we sent her a couple of products and she sent us back a whole bunch of pictures and she's also then sharing that out with her, her folks, you know, and, and saying, Hey, I, I, you know, here's, here's my photo, love my photo. But also if you want to get your own towel, uh, then, then go to weheart.biz. So great way to do that is, is to synergize with with photographers maybe you go to your local photographers and just do some trade outs a lot of them are, are happy to do that because they need to keep adding stuff to their portfolio uh and, and whatnot so you don't have to go necessarily pay a photographer now maybe you're a photographer and you want to set that stuff up um you know so that's one way the other way then it is with mock-ups you know so this is a mock-up and, and sometimes you can tell, sometimes you, you really can't, um, because one, one that I, I wanted to show you, uh, are, are these and, and here's, here's, uh, yeah, let's get back to that picture right there. So here's the deal. That's actually a mock-up. Um, so the, the picture was taken on our couch at home, but we didn't have all the, the nice background and stuff like that. So the picture was taken on our couch at home. And this one, you can kind of tell a little bit over here, but you really got to be looking, but that's basically um, uh, been mocked up. So, you know, that's the other thing. If, if you've got Photoshop, you can do some pretty cool things there and do some other things there. So uh, Joe, I thought you were going to bed, but you've got another great comment here. So um, he says, when you think of having, storefront in quotes, do you prefer the pre-made selling site, Wix, Shopify, et cetera, or do you, your own hosting so you can add things other than e-commerce, photo gallery, uh, forums, photos. And, um, Joe, so that's, a, that's a great question. And so he, here's the way that, that I go about this and, and I, and I totally get both sides of this. So what I do though, is I go with Shopify because for, for, for this specific reason, because if the intention of your store is to have that ability to, to purchase Shopify is going to give you all sorts of, of easy to use. And you're just not as much kind of like trying to make things work and stuff like that. It's, it's right there. You kind of get it all in there. Now you can, you can add pages to it and, and do other things. You know, she's got a blog that she uses here. Um, you know, you can build out other pages and stuff like that. Now, photo galleries, forums, forms, surveys, and stuff like that. All of these things can be built into the back of, of a, a place like a Shopify or a big commerce and stuff like that. So to, to answer your question, Joe, I, I typically go with, with those pre-made selling sites and then add other things into them. But there are times where if your site is more about some of these other things and the the selling is just kind of a minor part of what you do, then then yes, maybe um, you know, maybe something like a WooCommerce is a way to go because that's built on the WordPress platform. So you can have a WordPress site and build out all those things that you need through WordPress, but then also have an e-commerce site kind of inside of it. So um, I think a lot of it depends on what your ultimate goal is there. And, and what you're you're trying to do. In fact, let me get back over here. So, um, what you're trying trying to do with it? Um, if your main goal is to sell products online, then I would go with one of those pre-made selling sites. It just makes things so much easier. You know, my my wife is uh, a vocational rehab counselor by trade and is very non-techy. She worked in the government for a long time, so she could work her way around a green screen and. Uh, you know, that's about the extent of it. Yet she's she's been the one that's made all of the, you know, obviously she's learning, she's working on it. And so I'm not trying to belittle her at all. She's done an amazing job, but she's a lot further along because she's used a Shopify as opposed to trying to create it herself. Okay. So there's, there's an answer to that question. 
Now, now get to bed, Joe. <laughs> All right. What are the questions you guys have? Uh, let's see here. Yep. There we go. So uh, let me know what other questions you have and, and what other stuff's going on here. And then, so I got photography. Um, I think that's a great way to, to get some good photography is, is by doing some trade out with, with photographers. Um, you know, you can find those, uh, I'll see if uh, Kylene can come on here and, and share in the comments a little bit later on, maybe a link to some of those uh, photography sites that, that she's used. So um, I didn't get those directly from her. Okay. So the other thing that I want to um, sh talk about real quick, and we're 35 minutes in, so uh, long as usual, um, is is SEO. And, and I'm typing something in in the background, so I apologize for that. Uh, but SEO is also very important to this. And the way that, that SEO works with e-commerce is, is basically through content. So um, if I go back to uh, her site here and we take a look at, sorry, let me get that up there. We take a look at, at some of these products. Um, remember how we talked about having the keywords and figuring out what those keywords were that you, people are going to be searching for? Well, the keywords are really important here because um, that's what you want to get when, when you talk about SEO. So the search engine optimization, what are people going to be searching for if they want to get a, a personalized can cooler here? You know, so where SEO comes into play here is you got to have what they call H1 tags and, and other other kind of SEO related items. So having having bullet points like this and then having, you know, can coolers personalized up here in this header kind of thing here. And I, yeah, you can you can see that my mouse moving right there. You know, so that that's within an H1 tag in that product. And that does a lot for you. So that that's a, a big thing to do. Make sure your descriptions are really good and you have some some bullet points and, and some different things and then have an H1 tag in there uh, to do it. The other thing that you'll want to do is SEO for blogging. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, I think, uh, on one of these things. But but having a blog connected here, you know, is, is important. And, and she's writing about herself so you can kind of connect with her but also have things like personalized gifts and, and bringing smiles and happiness. And so as people are, are searching for those things, personalized gifts, custom gifts, you can kind of see that within those things. So talking in real normal language about your products so that those keywords show up is also very important for the SEO of, of your e-commerce site. So, so those two things. So SEO is also very important. Go back and check out some small business Saturdays that I've done before when I had Will Hankey on to talk about SEO. He's got a lot of great tips there. Um, he also joined us on two regular guys podcast and goes into even more detail on there. So just go search for Will Hankey. Uh, if you have any questions, I can put some things up there. So SEO is the other part of it. And then the one last thing that I wanted to uh, see if it's still here. I, I've got to type to get this up there. Um, this is just a quick, um, just give it a shot. I, I'm digging into it more now. I've, I've used it a little bit and then stopped, but it, we're getting ready to go back and, and use this more. Uh, and so this is just a quick tip, but uh, hot jar is the name of this thing. And basically it's, it's like showing uh, a heat map of, what happens when people come to your site? So let's see if I can, if they've got, got some things here. Um, it kind of gives you, okay, uh, come on, get to the right thing. There we go. So basically, let's see if I can get this to freeze. Hopefully it doesn't change. Oh, of course it does. Ah. <laughs> go, go over to, it's, it's just, it's hotjar.com. And, and check it out. And I was hoping that they would, uh, here we go, maybe product tour will help us a little bit. There we go. Click the, the heat maps is my favorite part about all this. So basically it, it takes a visitor when they come to your site and it records all of their actions. Um, it doesn't, you know, it's not getting in the way of the, the privacy or anything like that. So don't worry about that. But it records all of their actions and it records what they do. And it tells you, you know, a lot of good information, but basically what this is going to help you do is, is where they're scrolling, where they're stopping, you know, where they leave. Um, you know, if they're clicking a lot on, on a certain area, 
then you want to focus on that area. What, what's the most beneficial for your company to go right in this hot spot right here, you know, kind of thing. So you can kind of follow their journey and see what they're doing and, uh, and, and view those things and then go work on those areas of your website and improve the picture. Uh, give them a call, better call to action there. Uh, you know, re recording all, all of these things and, and viewing. So this is a really cool tool. Um, the free version, you know, gets you some pretty good information. And uh, then if you're really finding good success, again, it's another one of those things where if if you can get the return on investment, if you, you can move the needle by using this. So that's why I check out the free version, see if you can get that needle moved. And then you can come back and, and pay for it. And it's not, it's not cheap. Um, you know, you're, you're going to have to, so they've got their free forever here and you know, then you're going to be paying $29 a month for kind of the, the personal side. And, but if you're really doing a lot of e-commerce stuff, you're probably going to have to look at the, at the business version and that's 90 bucks a month. So it's not free, but again, if that $90 a month can turn into thousands of dollars a month in profit, uh, then, you know, I think it's worth it. So, all right. What other questions do you guys have? It says photos, uh, Marion says photos are so important. Yeah, I think that's huge. And and if I remember right, Marion, you, you're actually a photographer too, right? Um, and maybe I'm wrong, but uh, you know, again, find people that you can connect with that are photographers um, because that that's that's an invaluable service and and get them to, to take some good lifestyle kind of photos. Uh, that'll go a long way for an e-commerce site is having good photography. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's something there. Uh, let's see, let me make sure, go back to my notes, make sure I didn't cover anything. Um, I think that's it. We, we covered Etsy early on. So, um, if you guys have anything else, let me know. Uh, and, and while you guys are, are working on that, uh, let me just make sure that, uh, I do my plugs appropriately. Um, still signing up folks for the, uh, becoming a digital marketing superhero, um, webinar. Sorry, excuse me. I got uh, lost in, in thought there. Uh, so still signing up folks for that. Uh, we, we've got some time left, but uh, here's the deal. I know this is going to sell out. I've already talked to a lot of people that um, are, are ready to sign up. We've got 10 people signed up already, and we've really just launched this thing as, as being able to sign up for it. I have done pretty much zero marketing on it so far as uh, other than just kind of um, sharing it with the folks that have signed up. Um, so I'm about ready to uh, uh, get to unleashing the floodgates here. And I want you guys to be able to, to come to this. So just go to aaronmontgomery.info slash marketing and uh, you can get registered there. If you use the um, discount code community, uh, that's what I'm using for everybody here through small business Saturdays community. Uh, the other one would be regulator. If you're a two regular guys listener, it doesn't really matter. Both of them are the same. So community or regulator, um, no S at the end of either of those. So um, it's not plural community or regulator. That'll get you $25 off. So that's half off the, the, the price there. And um, you know, so for 25 bucks, we're going to go through websites, um, talk a little e-commerce, talk a little bit about just kind of websites and and why because that's a big part of digital marketing so we're going to get that get our mindset right on that and talk about some tips and and, and stuff there uh, we're going to talk about email marketing and we're going to talk about social media marketing so you know with those three foundation pieces of digital marketing you will be a superhero um, you now little secret you guys probably already are superheroes and you just have to have to let yourself uh <laughs> let yourself go, let yourself shine. So aaronmontgomery.info slash marketing, uh, get over there. And uh, oh, <laughs> Marion says, not a photographer, but learning a lot. Uh, cool. Well, there you go. And, and again, there there are some people that have uh, some natural skills out there. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they'd love to practice on your stuff. So there you go. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Um, one other thing here, uh, if you guys have any questions, need to contact me directly. Obviously, you can find me here on Facebook and all that other kind of fun stuff. But I always like to share my email address with you in case you want to just have a nice private conversation with me. Aaron at MontcoConsulting.com is a great way to reach me. And then uh, for those of you that uh, don't get an opportunity to check out the lives and 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 want to go back and, and listen to stuff and and be able to listen while you're working, listen while you're driving, listen while you're at the gym, listen while you're 
whatever it is where you can't be in front of a computer watching a video, uh, go to smallbusinesssaturdayspodcast.com and, and subscribe over there. Just click on one of the episodes and you can subscribe through any any number of the normal uh, players out there, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, uh, TuneIn, uh, all, all the major ones are there. So smallbusinesssaturdayspodcast.com, go over there and subscribe and love to have you along for that journey. Basically just a, a replay of these uh, that we do every Saturday. All right, guys. Well, I had an awesome time. Hopefully you guys learned some some stuff and I appreciate all of the, the feedback and the interaction there and, and uh, looking forward to chatting again next week. I'm working on a couple of things. I've, I've uh, as you guys know, I'm going through a, let's see here, I can get this, get the book here. Uh, I'm becoming certified as a success principles trainer. And I've got a cool group of folks that are going through the process with me as well. Um, so I'm not sure if Renee is, is going to be able to join me next week or not, but we're shooting for that. Uh, I'm going to have Renee join me, uh, one of the, the folks in my group. And uh, uh, she's going to talk about uh, taking 100% responsibility and some other things like that. So it's going to be, be fun. Uh, Joe says, what's the book behind you? It's uh, called Jack Canfield, The Success Principles. Uh, Jack Canfield, you can see up here, uh, right there, Chicken Soup for the Soul is, uh, is, is what he's really well known for, but uh, he's got these success principles and, and I've really kind of connected with them. A lot of them, are, you know, people are always like, oh, well, they're all kind of the same. Yeah, because they work. You know, Seven Habits, uh, the, the uh, oh, crud, I just forgot his name. Brian Tracy is another guy that comes to mind. They all have very similar principles of success and just kind of laid out in their own format, in their own way, in their own uh, kind of way they talk about things. And, and for some reason, I've just been really attracted to the way Jack Canfield goes about things. So, um, you know, that that's what I've chosen to do. And, and so I'm going to bring some folks from my group into here to help talk to us. It's going to help her because she's going to get to practice a little bit. And it's going to help you guys because you're going to get another take on ways that you can improve your business. So, um, Mike, good morning. Have a great morning. Cheers. Uh, how's everything going, Mike? Uh, loving all the charger pictures too. You've always got some awesome content, Mike. So thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing. All right, guys, have a great day. Have a great rest of your Saturday and um, have an awesome Labor Day. Be safe out there, but uh, make sure to have some fun, recharge your batteries. You know, and, and again, I'm probably just talking to myself here, but uh, you know, we all work our tails off and uh, we need to also take some time for ourselves and, and, and recharge. So there, there we go. Uh, get out there, enjoy your weekend, and we will talk to you next Saturday. Thank you.